Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, and welcome to another episode from me, Abermance, in my Building Stuff Free and and Open It Looks All Right series. And I think that's probably too long a name for a series, really. I should probably think of something better. Avo's Awesome Builds. There we go. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do something a little bit strange, a little bit different, something you probably wouldn't really consider as part of a build. But what we're going to do today is we're going to do something medieval, no surprise there, but we're going to do a medieval skyscraper. Yeah, I know, I, I need my bumps red. But a medieval skyscraper, I thought it could be a lot of fun. Now, I don't know what it's going to look like yet. In fact, you probably know what it's going to look like way more than I do because you've probably seen it in the thumbnail. So in the description below, let me know what it is and how it looks like, and then I can make sure that I build it that way. Otherwise, it could go horribly wrong. It's going to be quite fun, I think. I think we're going to kind of make it not massively detailed, but detailed enough. The external is more important than the internal. We'll fiddle around with the internal a little bit, but I want something that is going to be really standy outy and something you can see from a long way away, but also that looks good really, really close up. So let's have a go and see whether or not we can't make something a little bit wow. The palette I'm going to be using looks a little bit like this. I'm in 113, so I've got a much wider mixture of building blocks. But this is kind of the wood that I'm going to be putting into it. It's plenty of wood on medieval stuff. This is the stone that I'm going to be putting into it. And again, plenty of stone on medieval stuff. We've got some kind of ancillary bits like fences and ladders and trapdoors and glass and that kind of thing. And we've also got some item frames and vines and obviously a bit of lighting. I may not use all of these blocks, and I may use some blocks that's not on this, but that's the kind of palette we're talking about. Let's crack on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is my kind of patented, it's not remotely patented, method of marking it out on the floor. Let's get it out the right way. Um, in nine by nine squares, so that being one. And everybody wants a bit of counting with Avo, this is where it's gonna happen. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Bang, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Bang, whoop, get it right way around. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Right, so that is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna have three nine by nine squares by three nine by nine squares. I'm gonna put a little bit of detail outside of that afterwards, but I think that's how we're gonna work it. And then we'll have some inside. I'm not entirely sure how yet, but we're gonna work it out somehow. So this is not a block by block tutorial, people. I'm not going to be doing it in a way that is, um, say, block by block. Obviously, that's what a block by block tutorial is. I'm not doing very well, am I, today? So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Um, I'm just going to kind of do it in stages, and I'll come and let you have a look at what I've done stage after stage. So I'm going to get this marked out, and I'm going to start building up some walls and see where we are. So what I've got here is I've got what's effectively the first floor. We've got nine by nine squares and they are six. Well, the actual block across is seven high. So it's a fairly decent size thing. And inside, I've just set up the first set of steps, which is right in the middle there. And I thought, OK, medieval skyscraper, medieval block or flats, whatever you want to call it. What is likely to be on the bottom level? And I thought, OK, it's not going to be a garage, is it? Because garages weren't around in the medieval times, what you had was horses. So I'm going to put under here, or part of this, is going to be like a stable area. So if it is a stable area, by definition, surely it's probably going to be a fairly dirty type of floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Podzol, which has got a really, really nice um, graphic on it. Look at the texture, it's awesome. And we're going to put Podzol kind of randomly around a little bit like this on the floor. Uh, we're going to do it mostly in dirt with a little bit of cobble and some gravel. We'll grab some gravel in there as well. But if we get some cobble, where's my cobble? Oh, no, it's going to be cobble here. So if I put some cobble there too, and if we get like a big chunk of the floor being cobble, and we can try and make it look like it's deliberately, well not deliberately, kind of accidentally patterned, that it's meant to be cobble, but the cobble over time has got quite dirty and we're going to be using coarse dirt as well because that's got quite a nice texture. Do you see what I mean? So I'm going to try and build that up like that over a little bit of time and I'm going to close off some of these sections with uh, walls but I'm going to keep a big chunk of the sections open and what that's going to allow us to do is to have a really wide 
open an easy entrance for our weary travellers to come along on their horses. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to block off this lot here and we're going to start to make floor one. Yes, because this is the ground floor and this is the first floor. We're not in the Americas now where this is the first floor. No, no, this is the ground floor. Let's get this very clear. I'm making this in the UK. Therefore, this is the ground floor. And the main reason it being the ground floor is because it's on the ground. That's the first floor. Right, argument over. Let's get that bit done. Right, so the ground floor is kind of within the vision that I hoped, kind of. Still a little bit more detail to go. So we've firmed up some of the dirt. The dirt's overlapping out into the outside. Um, I'm going to do something around the outside as well before I finish, just by the way. We've separated it out with fences, but we've got a number of entrances so people can come in in a number of different directions. We've got a little bit of gravel. We've got podzol in here because I think podzol looks a little bit like animal poop. And inside here, there's going to be no small amount of animal poop. We've got some cauldrons with water for the horses. I will, before the end of it, um, put some horses on here and tether them to these posts because these are the tethering posts. We've got plenty of hay. I've got some quite nice little lampy things here. I didn't want to put glowstone in or sea lanterns. It just didn't keep in with the style at all. So we've got a glass surrounded candle because they did have glass back then. And um, loads and loads of hay, obviously, because that's what they would have. This bit of the area here is a bit dirty, but they can come through the gate and they can come up these grand stairs and they're on the first floor. And that's sort of where we are so far. I think it's come out fairly decently. I don't know. I don't know if I want to put anything else in terms of wallage. I might put some extra detail in here. I might put some feet on things like that. I'll come. I'll think about that in a bit. What I now want to do is I want to do the first floor um, because the first floor obviously is where we're going to start to come into whether it's living quarters or more functional quarters. So all we're going to do here is, where's me doodles? There we go. I'm going to raise these up another kind of seven high. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I'm going to do this all the way round. And again, what we're going to do is we'll come across, obviously it's a fairly familiar way of doing things. You'll know exactly what I'm doing there. And we're going to do that all the way around and I'm going to build in behind this. I'm just going to demonstrate it now so as you can see what we're trying to achieve. I'm going to build in behind this a wall of this stripped wood. Now I really like this stripped wood. I think it looks excellent. I think it it stops the thing looking too Tudor because if I'd use um, concrete or something like that it just looks a little bit too Tudor. I'm not trying to make it look Tudor I'm trying to make it look medieval. So we can use that kind of wall area there. And I don't know how this is going to work. But you know how sometimes we intersperse walls with um, different types of stone? Well, I'm wondering whether or not if we do something similar with different wood, whether or not it'll have a similar effect. I've got no idea. This is an experiment. Let's just see how that looks from the outside. Does that look? Um, I'm unsure. I may I may reserve judgment on that. But anyway, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna build up the walls, um, a couple of floors probably, and start to do some internal building. This first floor will be probably one large lobby area. It won't have any kind of internal segmentation, but I'm gonna need to do something Otherwise, it's just going to look like one big patch of wall. So I need to do something there. And then we need to do another set of stairs up to the next floor somewhere. Not quite sure I'm going to do that yet. Maybe up one of these sides. And um, that will take us up to the next floor, which will start to get some segmentation because we want to be getting some different rooms and compartments in here. So I'll be back when I've done that. So we've got a couple of floors done now. So this is back down on the first floor. Lots of detail still to do, but we've got the stairs, I think in a way that I am almost happy with. They're not quite right, are they? That needs to go up there. That needs to go up like that. Have I done it that side as well? Yes, I have. 
So that needs to go like that. Um, and that needs to go like that. Is that right? Yep, I'm happy with that. So that's the stairs that go up to the second floor. Obviously, we already know what the first floor has done, which I'm really quite pleased with. I think the first floor and the ground floor are going to look quite good. So if we come outside, we'll see what we have now done. So we've got, ignore that top floor there I'm still working on it but this is the first floor and we've done alternate windows and a solid windows and windows solid windows and put a little bit of detail don't know if that's the way it's going to stay but it's certainly the way it is for the minute we've got an outer pillar coming out part way up the second floor which has got one of those you know where the barks all the way round blocks don't know what they call it actually what do they call that block I need to know they call it oak wood as opposed to oak log. Uh -huh. So this is oak wood, not oak log. And we've got fences across the windows with dark oak trapdoors because I really, really like those to put as the shutters because very, very medieval looking. And I'm basically going to carry on in this vein and I'm going to go up a number of floors now before coming back to you. And you'll see the progress that we make when we get up to, I don't know, maybe five or six floors and we'll do some internals as well. So lots of work to do now and I'll be back in a long time. So I've done a number of floors and you can see this is kind of a, a midway point where we've got a little opening that we can wander around on. So I'm just going to come up and you can see what I've done so far. So that's the midway point where you can come up. This is the tower block so far. I think, even if I do say so myself, that, my friends, has come out really rather nicely. I like the way that the dark wood is contrasting with the stripped wood behind it and those um, dark oak um, trapdoors work so well, so, so well as shutters. And all in all, you could almost finish it there but i'm not going to i want to go up a few more floors i may need to widen this out because that's quite a severe indentation that we've got there but i'm not sure how we're going to improve it so we're just going to carry on i'm going to keep building up this um, stripped oak in exactly the same way as i have with the other bits and we'll detail it afterwards. That's how I've been doing it. I've been putting in the walls and then putting in the detail after. The advantage of creative mode, obviously, if you're doing it in survival, you're mental because it's a massive build for survival, but good on you for having a crack. But this is why I'm just going to carry on doing this. And I reckon we're going to do, I don't know, two, maybe three floors on this new size. And then we're going to tip it off with a nice top of the skyscraper type of thing keeping that medieval feel as much as we can. So let's get to the end of this other section. So we've got the tower and I think we've got sufficient floors now. The bottom bit's nice and detailed, the top bit's slightly less detailed deliberately and then all we've got now to worry about is the roof. And with it being a skyscraper, it really needs a roof to honour the detail and the height that we've already given it. So I'm gonna see if I can't give it some kind of roof that's gonna make, I don't know, just make it stand out, um, which means that it can't just be a standard uh, 12 by 12, I believe it's called roof, you know, the standard triangle where it's just as wide as it is tall. We need to give it a little bit more detail and funkiness over and above that, but keep it in the medieval style. So I'm gonna make a extended roof that is I suppose a little bit um, a little bit more pointy than a normal roof would be but I hope to get a little bit of extra detail in there as well and I think that roof tops off this tower absolutely beautifully we've got just enough detail to make it look fairly irregular but we've made it regular enough that it actually looks like it was meant to be like that. That is a nice finishing touch. I'm very, very happy with how that went. Now I think we need to take a look down here 
and see what we've got inside the building. We've kept it relatively simple inside, but at the bottom we've got our stables. There are horses there having a drink, tied up and being looked after by the stable boy who is not here at the moment. Where is the stable boy? I wonder where he could have gone. Anyway, so we go up to the first floor and here we've got a standard greeting chamber with basically no furniture, but a decent amount of lighting and to have going up the stairs to a dining area with a grand dining table inside here. Going up the next set of stairs, we've got what appears to be a bit of a throne room or perhaps an altar with people to sit and the king or the duke or the lord of this tower can take audience from all of these people. I don't know why I'm getting so dramatic. Let's go up to the next level because the next level is where all of the servants are going to be sleeping or maybe this lord has got a lot of kids and they all sleep there and upstairs once more we've got a completely unfurnished room because they don't know what to do with this one perhaps it could be the lord's bedroom but i don't know and then coming up the next set of stairs around the corner we have got the entrance or the exit depending on how you look at it to get in outside to be able to see around your domain. Not a lot of domain, it's all very, very yellow, but he can survey everything that he owns. Coming inside there, and we've got another set of steps that lead us up round and round and round to another antechamber that is just begging to be filled with something kind of meagre I think you know maybe it's more of a servant's quarters or something along those lines and then up one final set of steps that brings us to a mezzanine level that looks over that chamber but if we look up we have got some immense lighting and a chandelier at the top that goes into that roof so I think any lord any medieval lord with the sense to be able to build a very tall tower perhaps it's the medieval version of Donald Trump who has managed to build this Trump Tower in a medieval age and frankly has done an absolute masterpiece of engineering as a result of it so we're going to go back down again and we're going to see what this looks like from the outside once more it is really quite tall for a medieval piece of kit so let's get out let's close the gate and come outside and there we go we've got some lovely detail stone at the bottom moving into some wood with some nice medieval looking touches some decent detail using various uh, buttons there for uh, nails in the wood and some patterning using steps lots of spruce lots of oak and it's worked really really well And I have to say, I am really, really rather pleased with how that tower has gone. If you've enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you've enjoyed it. And perhaps I'll do some more of these kind of skyscrapery, medieval, rustic looking builds. And also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell. It'd be great to know that you're in my sub club and the notification squad. And I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.